coming up when the 10 o'clock news continues. People told us what they wanted. Gay rights activists marched from the White House to Capitol Hill today, hoping to increase support for AIDS research. Channel 5's Tom Hendrick takes a look at the march and the massive rally. We are everywhere! We are Touted as the biggest gay rights gathering in U.S. history, organizers claimed it would be as significant to their cause as the historic 1963 March on Washington was to the civil rights movement. I think the gay and lesbian community is just as, of, just as much a part of America as anybody else. And since our Constitution is 200 years old this year, we're fighting for our constitutional rights now. Hundreds in the march were AIDS sufferers, present to dramatize the epidemic expected to claim as many lives within the next five years as were lost in the entire Vietnam War. Part of my body went out, my bottom limbs are gone, but I'm strong enough that I want to walk. I don't want to ride the bus, I want to walk. Marchers also claim increasing threats to the civil liberties of homosexuals. Threats, they claim, have been institutionalized since a 1986 Supreme Court ruling which criminalized sodomy. And we are determined, determined that the right to privacy stays for women, stays for heterosexuals, and is extended to gay and lesbian people. Speakers claimed responsibility for helping defeat the nomination of Judge Robert Bork. And movie stars joined in the attack on the Reagan administration for funding weapons rather than a cure. It's our money, and they have to spend it on us now. No more bombs. We need hospitals. How long the wait for help? Presidential candidate Jesse Jackson promised when the Democrats take over. We must be concerned about those things that frighten and threaten all of us. Let's end the AIDS crisis. Some called it the gay Woodstock, a theme of unity in a war on disease and on bigotry. As thousands shout it, there can be no turning back as homosexuals come out of the closet for good. Tom Entering, Channel 5 News, Washington. This is Jan Smith. Friends and families of AIDS victims displayed a huge quilt on the Capitol Mall today as a memorial to those who have lost their lives to the deadly disease. The quilt is a collection of almost 2,000 patchwork panels, each bearing the name of an AIDS victim. Liberace and Rock Hudson are part of the patchwork, which includes panels from 48 states. It's very, very moving, <laughs> but mostly it's pretty devastating. And there's more. The quilt says too many have died. Too many. Hundreds of other names will be sewn on before the quilt is taken on a cross-country tour. This man made four panels in honor of his friends. Now he has learned he has AIDS himself and says the quilt encourages him. I know that I don't have to face this disease alone. The quilt is also a message to the government, urging officials to do more to combat the fatal disease. I'm very angry okay, that so many you. people have had to go without our government doing anything about it. There is a lot of anger about how AIDS patients are discriminated against. Papers complaining of an AIDS witch hunt were on sale nearby, and gays were heckled from the street corners. Repent, homo! Sex, sex, sex! Bad, bad homo! When they flaunt their sin out in the street like this, then they deserve this uh, disease they get. While AIDS has increased the urgency and the awareness of the gay rights movement, it has also increased discrimination. The National Gay and Lesbian Task Force says reports of anti-gay violence have doubled. Homosexuals now face more fear and paranoia in the community than ever before, and this quilt is one of their ways of countering that. Jan Smith, Channel 5 News. Gay supporters found something they didn't like even before they got to the White House today. They spotted a metro attendant at the Alexandria King Street station wearing rubber gloves. This prompted a call to metro officials who said they didn't know why the employee was wearing the gloves, but they did say he would be questioned about the event later this week. D.C. police have taken a man into custody after a shooting rampage in Anacostia today. Police say the man opened fire at about noon, killing at least one person and wounding two others. Authorities say they believe the suspect is the friend of another Anger man. at the Reagan administration saying it has failed to educate people about AIDS. Lives will be lost. 
that do not need to be lost. Because somewhere in the highest echelons of the administration, someone is frozen in some ideological uh, horror of uh, telling the American people some simple, straightforward facts of life which would save their lives. How long is it going to take before people get smart, educated people, not just people with no education. We're not talking about illiterate people. We're talking about senators and congressmen and the president. Gay rights advocates hope to make a statement against discrimination and to push for greater federal assistance in combating AIDS, which for many of them is a matter of life and death. Patricia Ox, CNN, Washington. A new report says Senator Edward Kennedy... ...the cause and the people it brought to the nation's capital. Capital today with a cry for no more discrimination. We want gay rights! Now! They were led by familiar faces, comedian Whoopi Goldberg, pushing a victim of AIDS, former now President Eleanor Smeal, and activist Cesar Chavez. From Baltimore, busloads of people came to demand a recognition of their civil rights. Gay people are people just like anyone else, and they deserve to be respected as long as they live in a meaningful and lawful life. For 15 years, they have been fighting for an end to discrimination, a fight made more difficult under the cloud of AIDS. That discrimination just trickles on down and, and just escalates and gets much worse if you have AIDS. Mm -hmm. Their demands, gay rights legislation, the right to privacy, and more funding for AIDS education. Our state and national leaders must be convinced that if they're not willing to spend the millions of dollars needed for education and research today, then they're going to have to pay the billions and billions of dollars for care and treatment in the very near future. But while the underlying theme of the gay rights march on Washington has been mostly political, there was also an emotional side being played out here a few hundred yards away from the Capitol. In front of the monument, a massive patchwork quilt with the names of over 2,000 people who have died of AIDS. Every one of these is a life, and every one of these names that have died is a part of a family. They're always scary thinking about the future and how many more people besides the people who are here, her names are here and have already died, are going to go after them. You know, when is it going to end? It ended today in front of the Capitol, but the effort will continue Tuesday on the steps of the Supreme Court. In Washington, Liz O'Neill, News 11. One of the nation's top AIDS researchers may be moving to Baltimore. Johns Hopkins University President Stephen Muller. Gay and lesbian demonstrators and their supporters took their case to the streets, marching down Pennsylvania Avenue, past the White House, to bring attention to their grievances. It's a uh, response to the anti-gay decisions that came from the Supreme Court and the uh, failure of the Reagan administration to do anything about the AIDS crisis in the last seven years while they spend trillions of dollars on a military budget. Doug Lawson is the organizer of a group of marches from Baltimore. Lawson expects about 2,000 area gay and lesbians for the National March. The most important issues is to let the world know that gay rights are actually human rights and that we exist in this world in this time that we demand respect. Well, I think the primary issue is to make a statement that we are here and that we are mobilized and that we have power and that we ought to be taken seriously. And uh, more than that, to the AIDS issue is predominant in this particular march. A 7,000-pound quilt containing the names, personal items, even ashes of people who have died from AIDS unfurled in the National Mall made a dramatic statement about the issue of AIDS in the gay and lesbian community. If you're not going to help the adults, then find a cure for the kids. Feel the power of this moment and carry the message to the Capitol. The demonstration ended with a rally near the Capitol, joined by celebrities and rights activists. They all pledged to join the fight against AIDS and for the civil rights of gays and lesbians. Sandra Pickney, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. On Tuesday, activists are planning a nonviolent demonstration in front of the Supreme Court building. Winners of this year's Nobel Peace Prize may have to do a little... And at the mall, between the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial, a giant 7,000-pound quilt was unfurled. 
bearing the names and personal effects of AIDS victims. Deborah Leonard, Merle Long, Jerry Lopresti, L. H. M. Gay activists say the AIDS crisis has spurred an increase in violence and discrimination against America's gay communities. Horace Hopkins University is going after the AIDS virus. School officials say they want to set up the rights of sexual preference. We come together for rights for all American people. Are they entitled to the same legal protection as other American minorities? Good evening, I'm Britt Hume, and this is Nightline. We are discriminating against in jobs and Our focus housing. tonight, gays and equal rights, and how the AIDS crisis has complicated and intensified the battle. This is ABC News Nightline. Substituting for Ted Koppel and reporting from Washington, Britt Hume. 25,000 deaths. That's the number now blamed on the AIDS epidemic, and experts expect hundreds of thousands more to die from it. It has hit the homosexual community in this country with special force, plunging it into a health crisis, just as homosexuals were trying to win the fight to be treated, they say, just like everyone else. But if the AIDS calamity has made homosexuality even more of a stigma in the eyes of some, it has united gays and their families and other supporters as never before. That unity was expressed this weekend in the massive gay rights demonstration that occurred here in Washington. Karen Stone reports on that demonstration and what its participants hope it will achieve. During the past several days, there have been demonstrations of joy and celebration in the nation's capital. Look at each other. Look at yourselves. What you see is strength and courage. What you see is a statement in honesty and pride, self-love and acceptance. There have also been demonstrations of anger and frustration. On AIDS treatments, no! We're the last minority that it's still okay to dump on, and I'm tired of it. We are demanding our civil rights to hell with the Hardwick decision, to hell with Bork, and to hell with the Reagan administration, to hell! Dave Castro, Michael DeSantis, Alphonse DeLora, and there were tears and time for mourning as a quilt almost as big as two football fields was spread out on the mall between the Washington Monument and the Capitol, commemorating nearly 2,000 Americans who have died of AIDS. Bill Pope, Kea Kodrea, Roger Reinhold, it was possibly the most cleansing, the most purifying uh, of, of uh, many of the events for many people. They were first, con for the first time, were able to get in touch with their grief and let it go. Uh, get in touch with their anger over the loss. Capitol Police estimated the size of the crowd participating in Sunday's March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights at 200,000. March organizers put the number much higher, from 500 to 700,000. Whatever the total, it was the largest turnout in Washington in recent years for any cause, and by far the largest ever for gay rights. Many participants likened it to the Civil Rights March on Washington of 1963. There's black people and white people, straight people, all kinds of people that are getting together just for civil rights in general. A lot of parents came from all over the country to Washington this weekend. I think there must have been 200, 250 yeah. parents from all groups. California, uh, Louisiana, Minnesota, all over the country Boston. to come and show their support yeah. for their children. Richard and Amy Ashworth, whose eldest son died of AIDS in May, feel strongly more needs to be done to fight the disease. It took the death of Rock Hudson to, to get Washington to talk about it. We wasted so many years. 
In July of this year, President Reagan met AIDS victims for the first time and named a controversial 13-member National Commission on AIDS. Two of those commission members recently resigned. We waited for four years for any kind of major funding to be brought from this administration. It took almost six years for President Reagan to speak the word AIDS. That's unbelievable. It is unforgivable, and we will not forget. Pat Norman, one of the organizers of the march, says the demonstrators have a number of demands, including a massive increase in funding for AIDS research and education, end of discrimination against persons with AIDS, repeal of sodomy laws across the country, passage of a federal civil rights amendment for gay men and lesbians that would end discrimination in housing and employment, a presidential order banning discrimination against homosexuals in the military and federal government. Tomorrow, the focus will be here at the Supreme Court, where thousands are expected to protest the High Court's decision last year upholding a Georgia sodomy law. Hundreds of the demonstrators, some of whom have AIDS, then plan to carry their protest up the court steps, where they expect to be arrested. The message we hope to send to the Supreme Court is that we want our constitutional rights, and we will not cooperate with the Supreme Court injustice at denying us our civil rights and constitutional rights. Last June, during an AIDS demonstration in front of the White House, District of Columbia police were criticized by some for the way in which the protesters, some of whom had AIDS, were handled with yellow latex gloves. We expect them to, to perform better tomorrow than they did at uh, the White House in June. However, we have no way of knowing what they're going to do. When Nightline called District of Columbia police, they refused to comment on how they plan to handle tomorrow's demonstration at the Supreme Court. Whatever happens tomorrow, organizers say the events of the last several days have brought together a new coalition that includes not only gay men and women, but political leaders, women's groups, and organized labor. With violence against gays reportedly doubling in the last year, and with the potential for that backlash to intensify, the new resolve and activism of gay men and women are sure to be tested. This is Karen Stone for Nightline in Washington. When we come back, we'll talk with two lawyers with opposing views on the issue of gays and the law. Tom Stoddard, who heads an organization promoting gay rights, and Roger Magnuson, who's against any special legal protection for gays. This is ABC.